Next, I want to mention this because I didn't mention it at the time that it happened. And I'm obviously really chuffed um, for the guy that this actually did occur because it's good to see a UK brand get this type of recognition. But I'm sure most of you are aware that Cortez, the brand from the UK, did a collaboration with Supreme about a week ago. It sold out in record time. It was only a t-shirt and a hoodie, but it absolutely sold out like so, so, so fast. Um, and I think it was proof that Cortez definitely is the hottest brand especially streetwear wise on the uk streets right by now i don't think there's any kind of you know contest when it comes to that even if you don't like what they do there's definitely no denying that the brand is definitely up there in terms of what they're doing the only thing for me that i was surprised by really when i thought about it was that it's the first uk brand i can think of that's collaborated with supreme and they did so before palace which to me personally, you know, no, never being, no, no, well, now not being a fan of Palace and hating the people behind it and shit, it's good to see them not getting the collaboration with Supreme before Cortez. But taking my hate for Palace to one side, it was surprising to see Cortez get their collab before Palace. I'm not, I'm not, and again, I'm not too sure if this is a reflection on the relationship of the Supreme people behind the scenes, the head office people and the palace people founders. Maybe there's some sort of st static there or maybe it has to do with, you know, um, non-compete clauses because, you know, palace has turned into a collaboration incubator, basically, right? They just are collaborating with just about anybody. So maybe if you do a certain amount of collaborations, there's maybe non-compete clauses in your contract. So maybe they can't do a collab anytime soon and they have to maybe spec out for another time. But I was surprised that a Supreme would go after a brand like Cortez do a collab with that's fairly young right I, I don't know how old Cortez is I'm gonna say they're five years I'm gonna say maybe they're a bit more older than that but I, I, I don't think they're over a 10-year brand and obviously to do it before a brand like Palace is a big um, I feel like stamp of approval that Cortez are obviously doing great things here in the UK and clearly have their finger on the pulse um, it features a t-shirt and a hoodie as you can see here on the screen the t-shirt and the hoodie feature the same logo you got the Alcatraz logo rules the world underneath their little slogan and of course Supreme written on there I'm not gonna lie I kind of like that they went with Supreme rules the world um, as opposed to Supreme Cortez underneath I think that was a good good decision in terms of branding wise because I think the rules of the world um, you know phrase is something that you obviously we all know is representative of Cortez the only thing I'm saying about I've said it before I've never really been the biggest fan of their logos I don't like that C star thing and I don't like the Alcatraz logo. The Alcatraz logo I've never understood for like a UK brand to have like a logo of an Al the Alcatraz prison. It's just, it's never made sense to me. Um, but I'm sure there's a ri rationale behind it. And I just, I just don't like how it looks personally. Uh, maybe get rid of the ring or something. It's just something I don't like about it. And I also don't like the C. But for some reason, I feel like it works really well together with the supreme text at the top, you know? Maybe it kind of reminds me of some... Um, Maybe it's, maybe it reminds me of um of some record label. I forgot what it is. Record label sort of logo, but there's something that works graphically really well about it. So I'm happy about that. And then on the back of the T-shirt, I, I guess it's a poem or some sort of manifesto written there as well on the back of the T-shirt. Um, the collaboration wasn't you know as plentiful as most people were expecting. I just thought they would have maybe done a full collab with jackets and shirts and shit. But I'm assuming this probably is the start of a long-term relationship. I think so, because um, the founder of Cortez, Clint, he's been featured in a few of their lookbooks as well, Supreme. So I'm assuming this is probably the first, you know, little um, dip, in the, dip in their toes in the water. And little by little, we'll probably see a lot more of them going forward. Maybe this will be their kind of go-to UK brand when it comes to collab season in, season out. So I expect to see probably more. But the sellout times, again, is proof that, you know, Cortez have definitely got their finger on the pulse because look at the mint is the second year of when they were sold out. Um, you got the you got the UK Times and the US Times. Um, basically within the twenty second time frame. Oddly enough, some of the times in the US are uh, you know they, they sold out quicker in the US on some sizes than in the they did actually in the UK. So clearly, it's proof that it's not just a UK Europe thing. They've definitely been able to rule the world, as their fucking phrase says. So it's great to fucking see that. But obviously, the backlash around it was hilarious. Certain people like stay grounded, and a few other people digging out some of Clint's old um tweets about Supreme, which I think don't paint him in a bad light if anything they show that he was in the field he was you know deep in the game in the trenches which is interesting because i've never really i don't think i've ever seen this guy in real life or met him anywhere but I, i'm also a bit older than him and i 
purposely took a step back from being around the scene and shit and kind of just retreated back home and became a bit of a hermit for a few years so maybe i missed out on a whole generation and crew of people out there but i never really saw him out and about but it's good to see from these tweets that he was definitely in the streets um you know in the field um laying it fucking hang so in 2014 um he said fuck supreme man yeah We've all said that over the years, I think. We've all had, I think that's a, that's the power of Supreme and why it's so resonated with us over the years. Um, always have a love relationship with Supreme over the years, but it's still, for me, you know, the number one, number one streetwear brand of all time, probably, um, in my opinion, personally. Um, it says here, another tweet here from 2017, Supreme need to pay homage to Tyler, the creator of an OF already. Would Supreme be as hyped without Odd Future? This is an interesting conversation because I think, Maybe because I was wearing Supreme way before, you know, Odd Future and stuff, guys came around. So it was never really a thing for me of Odd Future introducing me to Supreme. But it does need to be said that there is a generation of kids out there that only found out about Supreme and loads of other kind of, you know, um, streetwear brands because of Odd Future. Like, if not for Odd Future, a lot of these kids wouldn't have known what Supreme was. So maybe there is a lot of, maybe there is a need to acknowledge the role that they played in the trajectory of Supreme being what it is now. But, you know, I still feel like without Odd Future, Supreme will still be the number one streetwear brand in the world because they were, you know, a global power force before those guys came around. But it's no denying that these guys wearing the box logos, the t-shirts, the pants, the hats all the time was definitely 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 um played a part in their success especially with the younger demographic of kids out coming up another tweet from him in 2019 says all that line shit ruined supreme in the end because the worst wrong type of consumer started lining up which is funny because now you know the the whole point of you know one of the biggest marketing strategies of Cortez is the fact that he has the kids in his hands and they all kind of follow him around everywhere and there's cues and stampedes everywhere they fucking drop clothes so you know he's kind of seen the power of cues and how they that can kind of add to the allure of your brand another tweet here from him in 2016 he says i'd hate to be my third he's going to supreme lineups and pushing in front of children um <laughs> which is funny because i've definitely done that um but th that's why i've been that's why i was really happy when supreme did launch their online store especially in Europe, because it allowed people like myself who don't want to queue, who don't want to take part in that nonsense to just try to luck at home. Like I'm more than happy to just try my luck um, without bots at home and, and buy the things I want to online than having to struggle with the kids out there who have all the time in the world, all the energy in the world to queue outside. And sometimes the connection, because you know I've been out of the game for a long time. I don't know any of the security guards. I don't know any of the sales assistants. I don't know any of the man. I don't know anybody. And the last thing I want to do now at my stage of my fucking quote unquote life or career is trying to cozy up to a sales assistant to be able to get news on what's dropping when, or to try and suck up to a manager. Like it's it, it was never me anyway, and I'm not going to do it now. So I'm happy that there's an option for. For us people who don't want to do that sort of stuff to just buy stuff online because there is nothing more embarrassing than some guy and he's for he's trying to jump in front of a queue of kids and trying to fight kids for a fucking north face supreme noopsie or something i mean that is not the way you want to go about life another tweet from him says my dog who designed the k9t works for supreme now i'm happy and sad at the same time and then another tweet at the end here says brief interactions with the creators of palace and the creator director of supreme within a week 2016 um Actually, I met Noah once, actually, when I was out in New York. He was really nice. He was really nice, but the guy from Palace wasn't so. That's one of the, again, it, that, that's why it's really important. <laughs> it, as minor as these interactions are to be almost, that's why it's probably really important to actually try to be as nice as you can to people, even if you don't, even if you're not in the mood, because you have no idea or sometimes how a very brief interaction could have lasting effects on somebody like myself, right? Because I'm a, I'm a bit of an emotional, sensitive guy. But I remember the time when I was wearing Palace, I, was, I, I legitimately might have been with some of the, within the first few people that fucking bought some of the t-shirts that they were selling in skate shops, right? This is when they first started. They weren't even, they didn't even have their own store um, at that time, right? They obviously had online shit, but they were selling only in skate shops. So you had to actually go to a fucking skate shop to buy some of their shit. And I was one of the first people to buy their stuff. And I remember just trying to have a conversation with this guy or just trying to say, I don't know, trying to fan out or something. And I was met with a wall of like big time and resistance and just rudeness. I remember thinking, wow, bro, like just another reminder of just how fucked up the scene is, right? 
and how bad vibes everything is that you know i'm sure i'm trying to show love trying to show appreciation but i get kind of big timed and i remember from that day onward i never wore another piece of their clothing ever again and i never will do you know what i mean i'm actively rooting for their failure like for that one interaction again it could and i could be reading a lot into it it could be absolutely nothing but that one brief interaction completely sullied the brand for me so you know when i see cortese having a club like before them it makes me smile um and oh, oh and the noah guy was really nice actually I, I met him what in new york um a few years ago when i was working for some company and um, he was really nice all the guys actually in noah um, when i went to the noah store in new york were incredibly 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 nice very well very level-headed and chill and shit um the team there was really cool and then another tweet here from him in 2017 supreme mike jackson this is the only supreme piece i'll ever own so hey nothing too bad nothing too bad here um good to see that he got the collab i'm eager to see what else they're going to be putting forward um going forward i think we're going to see more stuff um in the up and coming seasons and hopefully um maybe even next year don't be surprised if you see an actual fucking retail store um you know so cortez are doing big things they're obviously selling out they've obviously got a big reach big fan base don't be surprised if you see more and more um growth from them in the next few years and maybe a retail store in a not too distant future i think that's definitely on the horizon for them so big up cortez supreme collabo is absolutely sick and yeah i'm eager to see what else they have going forward in the next up and coming few years